So when we're looking at this type of, of deal, uh, it's essentially serving the entire value chain that um, sort of what happens before you turn on your, your tap, where the water is coming from and how it gets to your house. And then what happens after you flush your toilet? So where does that waste go and how is it treated? So we're looking at the entire system that serves both that kind of the water in and then the water out. Um, so we, we're looking for investments that are both projects and, um, and companies across that value chain. Um, and we look first at impact. Basically with everything that we do, we wanna make sure that we're achieving our impact objective. So first we're looking for, are, are, are people gonna improve their access to water and sanitation? But with climate resilient infrastructure, we're also really focused on improving water quality um, because pollution is a huge issue in freshwater systems. Something like 80% of wastewater goes untreated around in emerging markets. Um, so we need a huge amount of investment in, in wastewater treatment. And then water scarcity is also an impact area that we're looking for. Um, and, and with those investments, what we're looking to understand is, is demand outpacing the supply of water in, in that area where we're considering an investment? And if it is, how can we either reduce water consumption, um, increase the reuse of water, so recycling water essentially, um, or um, develop a new kind of alternative water source? Like for example, a rainwater harvesting system or an, uh, an air to water technology. Um, and so one thing that we, one sample deal that we're looking at uh, is um, in the Ganges River in India, um, which is a super important river in that country for spiritual reasons, but also 400 million people rely on that river um, for their water source. Uh, the government of India is has been trying to clean up the Ganges because it's extremely polluted. Um, and part of that government initiative is focusing on municipal wastewater treatment plants. So we're looking at a deal um, in India where um, in a city where there is no wastewater treatment whatsoever. So like the 500,000 people who live in that city, they flush their toilet and it goes right into a drain, which drains right into the river. So the idea is to construct and operate a wastewater treatment plant that would serve those 500,000 people with access to safely managed sanitation for the first time. It would um, you know, improve the water quality in the river. It would also incorporate wastewater reuse. So it would take that tr treated wastewater and reuse it for landscaping, for irrigation. And um, there's also a biogas component. So um, with wastewater, there is there, there's actually really high greenhouse gas emissions. Methane in particular is a really potent greenhouse gas. You can capture that methane and use it to generate electricity that powers the plant and then actually sell some of that electricity back to the grid. Um, and we see that if waste is, um, if the project functions properly, there's these, these amazing outcomes. But one thing that we have to look at really closely is the, the effects of climate change on the project itself. So we take a really close look at physical climate risk um, because it's on a river, um, this, this wastewater treatment plant, we have to look at flood risk in particular and make sure that the project is designed correctly so that if there is a flood, it's not going to overflow and actually increase this problem of contamination in the, in the waterways. Um, and if everything can function, pro function properly, we see it as a, a really a cornerstone of sustainable development and resilience for the communities around it. I'm interesting, Gen interested, Genevieve, in how uh, how you actually measure the impact of the, all these things. It, it, I'm sure it, it uh, requires quite a bit of work and, and sophistication. Yeah, some of it is is relatively straightforward. You know, you can count things like the number of households that are connected or the volume of waste that is treated. I think what is a lot more challenging to measure is that resilience. Um, and that is a that is definitely what we're investing for. We want to invest both in resilient um, systems to make sure that you know, as I said, that they can withstand the climate hazards that are happening, but also so that they increase resilience for the people who live around those systems or who re rely on those systems. And resilience is something that, um, unlike you know, uh, mitigation, unlike thinking about CO two emissions, there isn't an 
uh, standard metric that everyone can use and everyone can kind of aggregate up and talk about getting to you know, net resilience or something like that. And the reason is um, not because it's for lack of trying, it's really because resilience has to be very context specific. Now I could live in, I live in Washington DC um, and my neighborhood never floods, but there's a neighborhood about half a mile north of me that floods all the time. So the same storm is happening. My neighbors and I are not affected, but just up the street, um, you know, there's inundation everywhere. So you have to get really granular when you're thinking about resilience. Um, and, and that makes it much more challenging both to analyze, um, to kind of have some scenario planning to understand what's going to happen in the future, but also to aggregate it up. So we see water and sanitation access is actually a really a strong piece of building that resilience. And if we can provide reliable service, then we're developing resilience. So we're kind of looking at reliability as a proxy for measuring the resilience uh, that we're the resilience benefit that we can provide. I wonder if you can go even further and talk about risk mitigation strategies that are in place to ensure sustainability and effectiveness of water projects that you financed? Yeah, um, risk is a key issue area that we look at for any investment. And we, our investment team looks at it across a lot of different factors. So I'll, I can just focus in on the kind of the impact and the ESG related risks. But I think looking holistically at an investment, we, we consider all risks essentially together. Um, because they affect both the financial return and the impact return. You know, if an investment goes south, um, it's a hit for um, on the financial return, but it's also a hit on the impact. So we really look at both when we're managing um, our our uh, portfolios. Um, on the on the impact side, um, some of the things that we look at is the the planning process. So, for example, um, has an environmental impact assessment been conducted, and were the users of that infrastructure consulted during the process? Um, there's a huge risk, for example, if um, it's not designed effectively, then people are not going to use it and they won't pay for it. So that's been a con that's been an issue in the water sector for a long time is kind of that thinking about the community input into how systems are put in place. Um, you know, in addition, thinking about the role of the private sector in water can be challenging because there are some examples where um, there's a lot of tension between people who think the private sector can come in and, and increase prices for water. And we know that water is a human right. Uh, we are not thinking that the private sector should come in and um, and necessarily own the um, facilities, but rather partner with governments. So we look for thinking about how the project is structured in a way that can mitigate risk for investors, but also making sure that it's designed appropriately for the people who they're serving. Um, and then I guess another impact risk that we're considering is who is benefiting from the project. We have a, have a focus on vulnerable communities. And if um, a project is designed, but it's not going to include a focus on uh, the, the citizens of that city who don't have adequate access, then we need to rethink how, um, how we're coming in as an investor and help increase the focus on, on those vulnerable communities. <laughs> 